Do you hear me? So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francois Tijot, and I will be talking about porting the DRM and KMS drivers to Dragonfly BSD. And maybe closing the window. So, uh, about myself, I'm consistent consultant, sysadmin. I'm a former CCTLD system engineer. I worked for the .fr registry. I have been an um, XORG and uh, X11 user, as well as a BSD user for a very long time. Um, I introduced FreeBSD in the .fr registry. So some .fr machines are now FreeBSD machines. And I've become a Dragonfly developer since 2011. Um, Dragonfly is a Unix-like operating system. It's, of course, BSD-based. It was forked from FreeBSD a little bit more than 10 years ago now. Um, one of the goals of the project is to be scalable. Dragonfly had many goals at the beginning. Among them, um, the project leader decided to try to scale for multiprocessor operations differently than what most of the operating system were doing. So Dragonfly uses per-core replicated resources, doesn't use complicated algorithms, and many operations are naturally lockless, and the goal is to keep caches as hot as possible. Uh, Dragonfly also some very innovative features which can be useful for some workloads such as database systems. Uh, it has a unique file system which has database features. Uh, the Hammer file system is capable of doing history retention. Every file operation you do is retained. You can go back in history, review changes, uh, see snapshots and so on. Hammer also does deduplication and real-time replication to distant file systems in a master-slave way. Uh, swap cache is a second-level file cache. It uses the existing swap infrastructure and is optimized for SSDs. Um, a graph is better than uh, many words and um, you can see here the scalability of the system. Uh, this was a benchmark I ran on a dual Xeon system. On the horizontal, horizontal line, you can see the, a number of Postgres clients. And on the vertical axis, this is the number of transactions per second you get. So I've compared Dragonfly with two competing Linux-based operating systems, and Dragonfly is a green curve. Uh, we'll now talk about uh, DRM KMS drivers in detail. We had a first tentative to port the new DRM drivers to Dragonfly BSD in 2010. At that point, it it um, became more or less obvious that if we wanted to keep running graphical applications, and X11 in particular, we had to implement uh, what is called a KMS. KMS means kernel mode system. And it's a new way to manage graphics and uh, Linux and uh, now other Unix-like operating systems. Um, so we had a student um, try to port code from Linux in 2010. He used a compatibility layer, but sadly, he ran into trouble very early. So he stopped his work. He failed the Google Summer of Code project, but tried to continue later in his spare time. 
he had some code which was apparently working on his machine, but um, I never could um, get it to run on mine. So this was a bit of a waste. So I started again with FreeBSD. Two years later, approximately. Uh, Dragonfly was based on FreeBSD, so we still have many common kernel APIs. Uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So in this summer, I started to implement some of the low-level APIs required by the kernel. Uh, by December, I had most of the Intel driver put in. It didn't work, but at least it was compiled, compiling. Um, and it took many more months to get it uh, working and uh, working reliably. Um, we had to implement many low-level subsystems, which we never had the need for previously. Uh, in particular, uh, the i915 driver is special, for it uses shared memory, um, memory which is attached to the main CPU. And yet, the GPU and CPUs part of the silicon are not coherent. Um, memory pages have to be mapped in some special way to be seen by the GPU and mapped differently on the CPU side. And we also have to manage caches page by page. So this is um, something very low level, very hard to, to get working reliably. Um, it uses something called the PAT, P-A-T, uh, which is um, the page attribute table, a new feature on uh, modern CPUs. Um, so we implemented PAT support in the kernel. But first, uh, we determine cache management was the only missing part to get the driver working reliably by completely disabling CPU caches. So we had the system booting like it was running on a 50 megahertz CPU. Everything was slow as hell. You could see lines being redrawn, but at least um, graphical operations were perfect. Text was displayed correctly. And windows appeared. So everything was running, running fine, but very slowly. Um, after having implemented pad support, I started to work on porting the Radeon driver, which is also some very common hardware seen in AMD CPUs. It's um, Radeon GPUs are now integrated into AMD CPUs, so it's very important to get that working. Um, by October of last year, I had the TTM and Radeon part of the DRM subsystem mostly put in. TTM is a special memory manager used by the Radeon driver. This is actually a bit more complicated than what the Intel driver uses. It's a very complex subsystem and um, also hard to get working reliably. But we fin finally managed to do it uh, by jolly of this year. Jolly. So, um, one of the problems we encountered later was FreeBSD dropped the ball. More specifically on the Intel driver, there were no significant updates to the Intel driver after the initial commits by FreeBSD people. The latest supported hardware is two years old by now. This is uh, Ivy Bridge GPUs. It's also blocking for FreeBSD people for they can't update their Radeon driver and generic DRM code without breaking the Intel driver. So it's a mess. And seeing that, I switched to Linux uh, for the new Intel upstream in uh, September of last year. And my first goal, my most important goal, was to get as well hardware support working. So there were many issues we had to tackle. And in particular, the FreeBSD code was nothing at all what the Linux drivers looked like. Um, 
most modern features are maybe from Linux 3.2, 3.4. The code is vastly different. Uh, FreeBSD also decided to keep the old DRM1 code completely separate from the updated code. So they have two DRM repositories, the old one, the new one. I ran a diff between the two, and most code was the same. So DRM2 in FreeBSD is DRM in FreeBSD plus a few more functions. Um, it's a mess. So I tried to rebase on Linux and um, selected Linux 3.8, same thing as a target. Uh, the Linux 3.8 branch is interesting for it is the first Linux branch with working, non-working, as well as support. Um, most people also base their work on Linux 3.8. The FreeBSD Radeon developer used Linux 3.8 as a basis. OpenBSD folks also targeting Linux 3.8. And that was very important for me because OpenBSD is apparently the best, as the best BSD KMS implementation so far. Everything is working. They are feature complete with Linux. And, uh, so I, I figured I could follow in their path and uh, use Linux 3.8 as a basis. Um, so I first tried to removes the most messy parts and uh, so put both DRM directories into the same one. Uh, I removed the old DRM1, Radeon and Intel drivers and replaced them per, by their updated version. I also had to clean up the AGP driver. AGP is still used for um, many operations. Linux people are moving away and don't have to use the AGP driver anymore for with recent Intel GPUs, but we still have to do with it for now. So basically, I ran diff, git diff between the Linux and Dragonfly code, try to figure out which parts were important, which parts were pointless noise. Um, implement the important differences piece by piece, so as to try to keep things relatively simple for each commit and not to break everything at once. Um, among the noise problems I had was the FreeBSD Intel driver used different file names. For example, um, there's one low-level API to handle um, output management, uh, like screen size, auto detection uh, of uh, whatever features um, the display at the end of the cable has, uh, which is called I2C in Linux, and IIC in FreeBSD and Dragonfly. Well, the FreeBSD Intel driver decided to rename files having I2C in their names to files with IIC in their names. So pointless differences and tens of thousands of lines of difference. Uh, we add functions present in different files. We add rename functions for not really any good reason. Uh, renaming things from I2C to IIC was not only done for file names but also for function names. Um, it took me a long time to figure out uh, what was going on but once I learned I had to move functions around to reduce differences with Linux. I basically reduced the differences by half, only by moving functions around. So I don't know what he was thinking, but uh, it was a mess. Um, the FreeBSD Intel developer also decided to completely re rewrite the driver to change style. Whereas Linux used if pointer statements, he used if pointer not zero or if pointer not null statements. He added, for example, parentheses to all return statements. In Linux, we had return zero. In FreeBSD, we had return 
parentheses, zero, and parentheses. And there were many things like that. Or you also added white space. Linux used, for example, 8, 10, 12 white space, white space characters at the beginning of some lines. And if Ruby as the author moved everything to four white space characters. Well, for no good reason at all. As still, the style was nice. It was clearly easy to the eye, but uh, it introduced um, an enormous amount of noise. And um, we had um, tens of, tens of uh, thousands of lines of code differences only caused by this style change. So I had to reduce this noise before moving to the important paths, uh, which I did later. Uh, there are some difficult spots where I wasn't able to completely translate code from the FreeBSD way of doing things to the Linux way of doing things, which is the GEM virtual memory code. GEM is a low-level memory manager used by the Intel driver. Well, to handle uh, different mappings de depending on if you are in the CPU context or the GPU context or so on to flush caches and uh, well, it's, it's very really very low level and um, very dangerous. If you introduce bugs there, if you make a little mistake, you can crash your machine, have your machine reboot instantly and so on. Uh, there's also the I2C versus IIC API, which is completely different in FreeBSD, Dragonfly, and Linux. So um, I had to do um, to adapt uh, the driver and work around these differences. Um, for the rest, I implemented Linux APIs, which, is, uh, which is the same old idea as the first Google student of code. Um, uh, David Chao tried to do, uh, which is also what the OpenBSD folks are doing. Um, for that, I used some wrapper code which was already present in FreeBSD. This is completely crazy. FreeBSD people used Linux wrappers for some of the drivers, in particular, InfiniBand drivers. Uh, EMC, NetApp, uh, Panasas people um, spent years to implement Linux wrappers to have Linux drivers work on FreeBSD almost out of the box. And the FreeBSD Intel developer decided to not use them. So I copied this file from FreeBSD, added to them to Dragonfly. Um, I also used missing parts, which I took from OpenBSD, since they also have Linux API wrappers. And for the rest, we implemented some of them in uh, Dragonfly, such as IDR, which is used almost everywhere to manage small integers in Linux. Um, see, there are many reasons why I decided to use Linux wrappers. One of them was the work was almost already done by other people in FreeBSD and OpenBSD. But mm, graphic drivers in general are very complex. They're fast moving targets, especially when they're in the Linux kernel. And it makes more sense to change the Dragonfly kernel to behave like Linux. It's more easy in the long term. It helps to reduce technical debt. And it's really, I think it's really the best approach to try to make the Dragonfly kernel behave like Linux and not try to change the graphic drivers all the way to behave like drivers which were developed in Dragonfly in the first place. That could be more technically correct in a way, but we just don't have the manpower to do that. Only for the Intel driver, Intel has something like 20 
different developers working on it full time. And I'm uh, the only one doing it in Dragonfly, and then only in my spare time. So it makes more sense to port the Dragonfly kernel to the DRM driver APIs than the opposite. So we have many Linux uh, header files, which are uh, just wrappers to existing uh, Dragonfly BSD APIs or generic BSD APIs. They are used by i915, Radeon, TTM, and they really help to reduce the difference compared to Linux. Um, I didn't use them everywhere still. In particular, I kept the locking directives completely separate. So the locking directives are specific to Dragonfly. And I wanted to keep things that way to make it more obvious and the kernel subsystems worked differently in, free, in uh, FreeBSD, Dragonfly, and Linux. So uh, I wanted to get as well support working. Um, the first step was to reduce noise. So I reduced the pointless noise caused by style differences, function defined different orders. And then I moved to FreeBSD APIs, which I replaced by Linux ones. So many parts are now completely identical between the Dragonfly and Linux drivers. And this really helped. We fixed many bugs just by using the original Linux code and not the code modified by the FreeBSD developer. We add angs almost everywhere. And, uh, uh, the driver is now much, much more solid. Um, after that, I figured out I had to update various subsystems. In particular, the interrupt code was completely different in Linux 3.8 than what was in FreeBSD, which was based on Linux 3.2 or 3.3. I'm not completely sure. Uh, I also add to update the ring buffer code. The ring buffer is the part of memory which is used to store commands for the GPU, which is then processed in a ring fashion. Commands go to the end of the buffer, and then uh, they start to be processed again at the beginning of the buffer, and so on. Uh, the output management code was also very special. Uh, by output, I mean VGA outputs, all sorts of plugs and cables you can use to plug displays to the GPUs. Uh, it's completely different in Haswell. In previous GPU generations, um, the outputs were more or less linked to a different chipset and they are now on the CPU die, and they also are now completely digital. Um, there's still some special handling for VGA support, but um, if I'm not mistaken, it will be removed soon in some future um, Intel GPU generation. So we had to update the mod, the driver mode management and uh, output auto detection code, um, which was one of the last part I got working. And then we were able to display graphics on as well, but they were correct. That was kind of funny, actually. For you could see window frames be displayed, and window contents start to appear, little pieces by pieces, little bits by bits and the form of small uh, rectangles, small um, rectangular areas. And it was caused by graphic-specific table management uh, structures. Uh, the GPU part of Intel's silicon has its own memory management units, which are completely different than the memory management units on the CPU part. So there are different page tables 
we have to manage the structures like we do uh, for generic uh, virtual memory operation. But we have to do it differently. And in particular, as well, as different cache attributes than previous GPU generations. So once I got that right, we finally had working operations and uh, pixel perfect operations as well. Uh, that was done in August of this year. So, quite. Um, quite some. So, so, that was the kernel. Um, I will now speak a bit about userland. For the kernel part, is not independent. It has to be used with traditional user applications and um, like Xorg or libraries and so on. So until 2013, we used something called PKGSSC, which is the package management system, which was created by the NetBSD guys. It was containing very, very old versions of X11 applications and libraries. In particular, we had Xorg Server 1.6. Um, it was too old a version to be able to handle recent GPUs, so I had to update it. I tried to do some work in PQGSSC, but for many reasons it didn't happen. And I myself lost interest in packaging. In 2013, Dragonfly switched to a new system called Dports. Um, it is based on FreeBSD ports, an automatic adaptive layer, automatic tests and validations. Version-wise, it was much better. Uh, we had Xox Server 1.12, which was enough to get the most recent CPU, GPUs at the time working. And uh, we also had uh, all sorts of updated software to go with it. Uh, sadly, we once again start to have the problem we had with PKGSSC. Uh, FreeBSD port versions are beginning to lag. Uh, FreeBSD guys took years to update uh, Cairo, which is a um, graphic library used by many applications uh, to handle two dimensional surfaces. They took care to update that. Uh, FreeBSD still has an old userland Intel driver in its port system. So I had to create a local package and um, used a much more recent version. It improved performance and fixed many bugs. Uh, with the old driver, we had the small artifacts, the black bars, black rectangles, and so on, which is now fixed by the new version. But I hope FreeBSD uh, will be able to update its port system and uh, have recent libraries and applications. So the current state is the Intel driver is mostly synchronized with Linux 3.8.13 except the lower, the low level virtual memory code, CGM code. DRM Radeon, the DRM Radeon driver is synchronized with Linux 3.8. It doesn't have the bug fixes from Linux 3.8.13, but it's not really a problem at this point in time. And the TTM memory manager code used by the Radeon driver is based on Linux 3.9. The generic DRAM part of the code is a bit of a mess. We still have to update it to make it more like what is in Linux 3.8. I already updated some parts, but others are much more older and um, troublesome. Um, in the future, I plan to keep synchronizing the DRAM code and in particular the generic DRAM code with Linux 3.8 something. Uh, it's required by features like DRAM Prime. Um, DRAM Prime is the um, subsystem which handles um, hardware using two different GPUs and only one set of video outputs. Like if you have a laptop with an NVIDIA GPU and an Intel GPU, 
you, you need some special handling to be able to display graphics on uh, the video outputs. Otherwise, you only get a black screen or whatever. Um, my goal is then to start updating DRM drivers to more recent versions once we will have something more like Linux in the, in the generic DRM code. Um, then maybe start porting new drivers. In particular, we had many people ask about NVIDIA support, and for that we will require the Nouveau driver. Um, a requirement for porting Nouveau was also to get the TTM memory manager working reliably, which was done with Radian, so now we're good to go. Um, Another problem we have is once we start running Xorg, we lose console display. Uh, the traditional VGA consoles with 80 by 25 text characters don't work anymore once we start Xorg. Um, if I try to go back to the console, for example, I will get a black screen or a frozen display. I could try it in real time, but it's probably not a good idea right now. Um, so we could try to reset the GPU to be more like a traditional VGA, VGA GPU once we quit Xorg, or alternatively implement a graphical TTY layer, which is what the FreeBSD people are doing, which was also done by OpenBSD, um, NetBSD already has a graphical console. Um, it is used by um, non-PC architectures in particular. Um, well, there are some patches uh, floating around, but nothing serious at this point in time. So, I wanted also to thank some people. Uh, Konstantin Belosov was the FreeBSD developer who ported DRM KMS in general and the Intel driver in particular to FreeBSD. Alexander Kabef started to port the Radeon driver to FreeBSD and the job was completed by Jean-Sébastien Pedro. And on the Dragonfly side, I did most of the porting from FreeBSD. I did the general generic DRM part, as well as the Intel and Radeon driver, and also the TTM memory manager required by Radeon. And some critical people made all of that work and work reliably. Um, Janice Hoffman spent months working on bugs on the i915 driver. Um, he was the one who finally was able to display pixel perfect pictures by disabling cache on the system. Madeleine added path support to the kernel and fixed critical virtual memory bugs. And Joris Giovanelli and Marcus Pfeiffer, who are, are also Dragonfly developers and fixed critical bugs and uh, spent lo long, long weeks um, trying to find bugs and fix them. We had some stupid things like um, the AGP driver trying to write memory in the middle of its window and corrupt some kernel subsystems and uh, some many things uh, like that. So, so I'm done. Do you have any questions? Yes. Well, I just, I just discovered NetBSD was doing some significant work uh, during this conference. So, I'm running full time on one of my machines, DLM KMS. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, X, uh, well, you can run XORG, then you mm -hmm. get a, a, a functional moving cursor, but that's about it. From the yeah. level corner, little white uh, uh, dots. And mm. that, that's as much as you can run XORG. Yeah, then on the radio on the machine.
Okay. But uh, otherwise, it switches correctly to graphics mode when you boot it, hmm. so there was no problem with that. So was it Before it used to crash. If you try StartX, then it's a hard reset. When oh. you crash StartX, it's just hard reset. Oh, so that's with the Radeon? Uh, it's a Radeon, yeah. It's a, right. it's a, it's a, uh, it's a Samsung Fire Pro. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't okay. be surprised. I mean, it, it loads the microphone correctly, but it's just the XOP is not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's okay. interesting to see that all three projects, Dragonfly, NetBSD, OpenBSD, have decided to take their Linux code as is and put a compatibility layer. So I wondered well. if all three groups have slightly different fixes to the Linux code, which that probably should be combined, like, um, even though the compatibility layers are probably going to be separate. Yeah, um, trade, um, yeah, trying to keep uh, the compatible layers compatible and um, Maybe not maybe merge them, but trying to see what's going on in other BSD projects and uh, see if bugs are fixed or improvements made. Yes, it's a very good idea in general. Um, yeah, you said uh, all three projects are moving to a Linux compatibility layer. Uh, it's not completely true. Um, OpenBSD faults did that. NetBSD faults are doing it. Uh, I just discovered it uh, this morning. Um, I'm doing it on Dragonfly, but uh, the FreeBSD Intel developer has a different approach. Apparently, he's trying to completely re-implement the Intel driver on his own, and uh, I don't see how, it's, how that's workable. Uh, with BSD projects don't just don't have the manpower to do that. Uh, Any other question? No? Don't be shy. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you.